to be hopeful in bad times is not just foolishly romantic. It is based on the fact that human history is a history not only of cruelty, but also of compassion, sacrifice, courage, kindness. What we choose to emphasize in this complex history will determine our lives. If we see only the worst, it destroys our capacity to do something. If we remember those times and places, and there are so many, where people have behaved magnificently, this gives us the energy to act, and at least the possibility of sending this spinning top of a world in a different direction. And if we do act, in however small a way, we don't have to wait for some grand utopian future. The future is an infinite succession of presents, and to live now as we think human beings should live, in defiance of all that is bad around us, is itself a marvelous victory. That's a quote I found from Howard Zinn. I think I found it on a Farnham Street email. I started this podcast a year ago as a bit of an experiment. Um, and I want to put some effort now into focusing it a bit, making it a little bit more clear what it is I'm trying to do here. Um, so my aim is to do four episodes a month and each week being a different format of an episode. I want to try a number of different things, see how it goes and you know, what works I'll keep, what doesn't work I'll drop. But the idea for now is for the four formats, there's conversation episodes where I'm having a conversation with someone else, a monthly journal update episode, which this one is going to be like that, uh, book reviews. So I got on to Founders Podcast recently. Oh man, it's amazing. You should check it out. So it's just this guy who reads his notes from biographies he reads of mostly founders, uh, company founders, but he also has done Alexander the Great. Um, he's done uh, lots of different people. Um, Theodore Roosevelt. Incredible stuff. Um, so I've honestly been inspired by him and his style and how he's approached things, um, but I, I'm going to do it for, you know, things that are more on theme to advanced retrodaptics, right? And then the fourth category is uh, deep dives either on builds, specific projects, or special topics, more like the, the first batch of episodes that I did early last year. Okay, so this, uh, this episode is the monthly journal update, and honestly, I'm a little... I feel a little awkward about like sharing, you know, uh, my life. It seems a little selfish, but, um, you know, at least on paper, it's on mission. A big part of what I'm trying to do is to talk about and demonstrate the kinds of lives you can have when you start adopting post-consumer praxis. And so filling in some of the details of, uh, how I'm making that work is on mission. So in terms of money, January was a really exciting month for me. I finally, broke down through into the four figure club. Yes, that's right. My trailing 12 month cost of living in January crossed down into $9,222, which means in between uh, February of 2022 and January of 2023, I spent $9,222. That included a six month trip to Europe, that included building the studio, uh, some other things. Uh, and so, uh, you know, I've got this project, Project TTM 5K, which is to spend only $5,000 in a year, which is kind of a funny, uh, you know, ambition to have, uh, but that's my ambition. Uh, so I'm getting there and I've crossing into that uh, four, four figures instead of five figures for my uh, trailing 12 month cost of living. Uh, it felt really good. It was encouraging. Um, some other numbers. Let's see. My FU stash is at four years. And my full stash is at 15 years. So my runway, my liquid runway is four years. My total runway at the moment is 15 years. Um, and as my TTM cost of living uh, continues to come down, those numbers are obviously going to increase. Um, so, so money is good. So for projects, I'm still eyeballs deep in other people's projects. Um, but I am getting closer to wrapping them up. I've been really focused, uh, putting a lot of energy into them. So since we talked last, I got our solar system for our well here on the property up and running. There's still more to do, 
but uh, we are pumping water out of the ground into our tank using energy from the sun. It's really quite incredible. I'm going to do a whole video on it. It's all working great. So really excited about that. I am cranking on my neighbor's uh, system, his PV upgrade. Uh, we Over the weekend, I moved a, a, a literal ton of concrete in 90-pound sacks. Moved it about three times. Uh, we did the concrete pour on Sunday for the piers uh, for the ground mount rack, uh, which is going up. And it, it feels like that was kind of the last major hurdle. Everything from here just feels like details. We've got the batteries. We've got the panels. We have the concrete in now. So it's just a matter of putting the rack together, wiring, getting everything connected. Um, so I'm excited to get this going. I'm excited for my neighbor to have a system that actually works now. Uh, but I'm also excited to get some of my time back. Um, I've been maintaining progress on my book project. Um, and I'm aiming to publish it by the end of next month. So by the end of March, I plan on having this book available. Um, so I'll, I'll probably talk more about it uh, in the future. But, you know, the basic gist is, so I'm 36 now. The gist, the premise of the book is my 40-year-old self travels back in time and has a conversation with my 25 year old self. The working title of the book is We Need to Talk. <laughs> uh, it's been really fun. Uh, it's been really fun to write. It's been really fun. It's been really interesting digging back into kind of my psyche and stuff. I've been, I've been writing journals. I've been keeping a journal since I was 12. And so I went back and read all of my journals, uh, and that was uh, that was not fun, but that was something I've never done that before. So I had a lot of insights about who I was myself going back through that, going back through all those journals, um, and it informed my project quite a lot actually. And it's actually not only has it informed that project, it's actually the process of going back and reading what I wrote in the past and how I was thinking what I was going through has actually changed my perspective on who I am now. And it's changed how I view the world. I'll, I'm not going to dig into that right now, but I, I will. And it's, it's, I mean, you're already seeing it cause it's already in what I'm writing and what I'm talking about. So, um, really powerful. I can't recommend a, a journaling practice enough. And if you're a parent, I can't recommend, uh, trying to figure out a way to instill a love for journaling um, in your kids. You know, I started journaling when I was 12 because my mom was like, hey, you're homeschooled. Uh, we're moving. We're doing all this kind of weird stuff. You're keeping a journal now. Um, uh, you know, just, just keep a journal. And I started it and, and I just never stopped. So I'm currently working on journal number 31. Yeah, you know, the stack of journals is like that high. Um, anyways. So that's what's going on with that. Um, I'm also, uh, other random updates for the past, like at least five years, I have not, I've done a dry January, no drinking in January. Right. And for a number of those years, I wouldn't drink until April. I think one year I went to June even without drinking any alcohol or like, you know, one drink on my birthday kind of thing. And I was going to do that this year. And then I was like, well, I'll go to my birthday. And then I was like, well, I'll just do the whole year without alcohol. So I've decided to make 2023 a dry year for me. And um, so far, it, it's been great. I feel really great. I've been needing less sleep. Um, and I just feel really healthy. And, you know, after, I don't know, a week, I didn't even, I didn't even notice. So, Okay. attention what has had what has had my attention recently so besides projects i've been spending a lot of cycles thinking about optimism and pessimism and love and fear and how to talk about it and i want to give a big shout out to matt s for some communication uh, that we've had and uh honestly some things that he shared with me uh, really sparked a lot of this thinking um and i've just been spending hours and hours and hours thinking about this stuff. So thank you, Matt. Um, this has been really productive thinking for me. Um, hopefully make some of the stuff that I'm doing better and clearer and more useful for people. Um, but you know, I've been, I feel like I've, I'm constantly trying to walk this tightrope between optimism and pessimism, between doomerism and techno utopianism, right? 
Um, I'm neither a doomer nor a techno utopian. Um, but if if you're not one of the if you're not one, people assume you're the other, right? So it's almost like if you give off some doomer vibes, they'll assume you're a doomer. If you give off some some optimism vibes, people will assume you're a techno utopian. Um, it's difficult to express that while I do have a lot of critical things to say about how things are currently arranged in the world, um, and in fact, I think we're in a very precarious situation, and the way we run things now isn't going to last much longer because the logic of it is self-terminating, that doesn't mean that I'm defeatist. It does not mean at all that I'm resigned to, you know, this, this wave crest of humanity to plunge back into some kind of dark ages. I don't think that at all. Um, or rather, um, I reckon maybe it's possible, but that's not what I assume is going to happen. Um, rather the opposite. I'm actually psyched to not only see what the future holds, but to play an active role in manifesting something really cool, some some aspect of of, of a future that doesn't suck. That's like that's why I get out of bed in the morning. You know, so I talk a lot about. Gaining personal, I talk a lot about uh, achieving personal freedom and broad practical skills, but that's not because I'm a survivalist. Freedom and competence are not the point. They're the platform upon which we're empowered to act in the world, to show up and express our gifts, free from the infantilizing cages of consumer culture. Right, The whole reason, the why... For me, the why of post-consumer praxis is to be able to help make the future, this unfolding present moment, better than it otherwise would have been. Not just for us as individuals in our own lives, but for the rest of the world. And, and, and there's so many different ways in which we can employ our life energies uh, you know, for this, this purpose, this pursuit. And some of these ways contradict each other. Right, and I think that's great. I'm a huge fan of dissensus. Dissensus, it's the opposite of consensus, right? It's it's like the diversity of opinion, literally. Um, you know, a lot of, or maybe all of, what each of us chooses to do and how we show up in the world, it comes down to personality, right? Some people, you know, they're going to head to the mountains, and other people are going to double down on the cities. Some people will be outside spending most of the time in gardens and, and, and food forests and actual forests. And other people will be, you know, just eyeballs deep in code. They're just going to be plugged into the matrix. So, some people are going to seek out large in-person communities to be immersed in. You know, I'm thinking here like eco-villages and the like. And other people will be loners. They're going to live like hermits. I'm, I'm obviously more on that end of the spectrum, but not totally. Uh, some people won't know which end of a splitting mall to hold on to, and other people will happily voluntarily choose to live without electricity and running water. And I think that this diversity of life path is, is unspeakably beautiful. And this is one reason why I hesitate to share details of my own lifestyle, because I don't want people to think that I'm saying everyone ought to live like I do. <laughs> heavens, heavens no. That'd be terrible. Um, first of all, it'd be really boring if the world were full of just people like me. But, you know, I live in the mountains. I live in the mountains because I was born and raised in the mountains. I love the mountains. And hopefully I'll die in the mountains. Hopefully much later. But that would be great if I could arrange to die in the mountains. They feel like home to me. I'm an introvert also, and, you know, I do best with an amount of solitude that most people would be very uncomfortable with, um, but I, I thrive with as much time to myself. I'm also a little bit of a dirtbag, like, I just happen, I just happen not to care about a lot of the modern conveniences uh, that first world people have come to um, kind of take for granted in the last handful of decades, double handful of decades, um, which isn't like, I, I certainly benefit immensely from uh, lots of things going on with the first world. It, it's not a rejection. It's just like, I just don't care about having running water, you know? Uh, you know, I, I have stuff's dry. Like, I don't mind building my own stuff. Like, whatever. It's just, there's a, there's a level of, like, quality of life that's kind of like the first world standard 
that I'm just, for whatever reason, largely indifferent to. Um, so, you know, the point is, in many ways, I'm a little odd. And I don't think most people should or would want to copy me, and that's fine. Uh, but I do think I'm well suited to be a sort of like a pioneer species, like a, like a scout a guinea pig sort of, you know, like I can move light and fast and try stuff and experiment with things and report back and be like, oh, don't don't go that way. That didn't work out so great. Or, or yeah, hey, maybe we could, you know, invest a little bit more time over here in this area in this kind of lifestyle path. And, and some people might think that's cool. And like, you know, that can that can be a neat thing for some people to do. That's sort of how I see my role. But the, but the bottom line is no matter what, my ultimate guiding purpose and mission is to be involved in the co-creation of a future worth living in. A future that is so much cooler than the current arrangement that will want to move in the direction of that future, of those futures. That will be enticed to go there because of her own desire, not from coercion, not from rules, not from like, hey, you got to do this, but be because it will just entice us. And a point to this is that I really love humans just the way they are. I am not pro making humans better. I think humans are fine just the way they are. Um, in fact, I think that the the, the idea of and the project of making humans better is incredibly dangerous. It, it makes me very uncomfortable. Um, I'm not into that. What I think is true is that it's our systems that need a little TLC, right? Our governance, our social coordination habits, our tech stacks, and our shared cultural paradigms. These things... These are the things I'm interested in, in fiddling with, right? This is the work, I think. And connecting the dots between the day-to-day -day of our lives as humans living in this world, you know, the, the to-do list for next Tuesday, connecting the dots between that and this work of an enticing future that people will, will, will be drawn towards, this is what... It is that I'm trying to do. This is what Advanced Retro Adaptics is about. This is what my writing is about. This is what these videos are about.